Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today in the Remotorcycle Garage we're going to pick up on the wiring again. Um, we've developed the, the wiring diagram and everything a little bit further so we're going to start actioning that, turning it into what do we need to do on the bike and fitting some stuff. So all of that is going to be done whilst avoiding drips because this is a leaky shithole of a garage and in traditional Scottish summer there is no summer, it's just rain and so no better place to be in the garage so grab yourself a cup of tea beer whiskey whatever you want and join along this should be a good video cheers so last video we talked all about the logistics and management of where things are going to go we did quite a bit of work to get in the battery box home um which is which is good needs to happen need to really consider where stuff goes so we can start thinking about where wiring and everything else goes and how the whole system interconnects but one of the biggest things that was missing was a wiring diagram so I have spent a couple of mornings just butchering um, uh, butchering? no not really, I made, I made a I use Adobe Illustrator, that's what I use to create my shit hot uh, merchandise <laughs> I'm not going to plug out this video don't worry links in the bio um, so <laughs> Yeah, I use Adobe Illustrator, um, which I'm learning how to use it because I, I want to kind of learn graphic design. Um, I think it would be a, a useful a useful skill to have when I eventually get caught out and the oil industry lays me off and never once <laughs> turns its back on me. So it would be nice to be able to use um, graphic design just as a, as a handy skill to have, just in my arsenal of skills. But... I use Adobe Illustrator to create a wiring diagram and I've seen wiring diagrams before there's absolutely nothing wrong with the ones you can you can just copy and paste one online in fact if you want to copy this one please do but wait until I have made any final changes because there's bits and pieces on here that I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure are okay but I just want to be sure that everything's lined up and, and, and correct so that if, if other people are using it, then let's you can be sure that it's hopefully not going to fry your bike. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Um, so this wiring diagram is set up for the B box. So I took their instructions and just all the other components that exist on a bike and and started to build a nice wiring diagram. So. Um, one of the things that I need to do in this bike before we start really wiring it up is put the things like the ignition on and, and, and just make sure that all those things are connected up. Um, so the you can look at the wiring diagram in, in, in three separate phases, I guess. You've got your, your charging system, which is your alternator uh, and your regulator rectifier, and that takes all the, the current and power that's generated by the alternator and, and, and feeds the bike once the bike started. Pretty straightforward, but we'll have a look at that later on in the video. Oh, Christ, I've got hiccups. Sorry. <laughs> Please send help. The other thing uh, I have is this Neutronics Ignition. Auto focus is off. Good job, Strun. The Neutronics Ignition is a contactless, uh, more modern ignition that pretty much. Let's turn it off. Focus on this. Traditional bikes use a. Um, like a, traditional bikes use a, a points ignition, which is a mechanical signal, like a, a physical brake happens. You've got three points, with, you would have three points for this bike. I've not actually got one because both my bikes came with the more modern Yamaha electronic ignition, which I didn't realize when I bought this bike that I had it, hence why I bought this, just, just to have so. This was about 150 quid, I'll put a link in the bio, but a good recommendation from from what I hear is when you're working more classic bikes, it's good to upgrade your, your ignition. So, sorry, this here eliminates the mechanical action and, and it's, a, it's like a contactless ignition. So this little breaker, this little thingy here attaches to the part of the engine that spins around. As it spins around, it breaks the signal this break in the signal sends to this here. This here is connected to power source, i.e. the battery. Uh, at some point, we can look at my wiring diagram. You can see there's a line that comes out. These three points here connect to the coils. You can see in the diagram, the coils go, the coils and send the spark to the engine. So this tells the engine when to fire at the right point in time. Fairly straightforward. 
Um, this should be a fairly straightforward installation. I have some pretty comprehensive instructions from Neutronics. So one of the things you have to do first is make sure the engine's in the right position, top dead center on the first cylinder, I believe. Um, once that's in position, you can start taking bits off and that this needs to go in in the right position and set up such that when you start the bike up, it's not 180 degrees out of phase, it's in the right position. So um, all I'm gonna be doing is following the instructions, fitting this in, We'll roll the time lapse and then if I have any issues I will explain them but we'll see you on the other side. Let's get some nice noises for you ASMR freaks. So that fitting of that was fairly straightforward. Just got to be sure that the engine doesn't is always in top dead center. Just with the faffing around of holding that center nut and loosening the bolt, it could. I off camera just double checked that it was top dead center. Um, it appears we can't do much until we progress a little bit with the wiring and getting things set up. Um, we need to set the timing, uh, I make sure that this this little unit is speaking to the box properly so there's instructions, there's loads of little cables that fit in and, and then you just you try and set it up. I think you can do it with a timing light but I think there's a way you just set it manually first of all so that it's all speaking to each other um, and then I think you use a timing light um, stroboscope, stroboscope um, but I think we shall, so for example, the way the coils are rigged up on this bike originally, each one of them gets an individual feed from three different cables uh, and then there's three different cables come out of the coil. I think what I'll do is the coils actually connect straight into the back of this. Um, at the moment there's like three cables, uh, you can see the little cutaway. So I'll rejig it so that I've got a 12 volt feed taken from somewhere into those coils um, I'll figure it out, I need, I need to just work through that a little bit and, and, and let you know what I'm thinking But so, onwards one of the things you did have to do was cut the old grommet uh, for the, the cable but that's straightforward where you cut it is actually the side that doesn't see any of the, the pressure um, but it's the side that faces out the way and I used this Loctite uh, 406. I initially bought this stuff after doing a bit of research for uh, O-rings, so um, I bought my own O-ring material because I was sick of paying people for an O-ring which you could track and make yourself. So I bought this O-ring material, uh, it was a Viton, I there's a, I'll put a link, but essentially for carbs, when you're taking carbs back taking them apart and putting them back together again it's good to have you sometimes find that the o-ring 
expands uh, just because it's maybe come into contact with fuel. There's a few ways to deal with that. You can either chuck that carb rubber into boiling water for a bit and then see if you can boil the fuel off and then sometimes it comes back into size. But if it's really old and perished, you're better off just using something like either buying new carb rubbers or using o-ring material where you can trace round, <laughs> again nothing to do with electrics, uh, but trace round and then cut and then use this stuff. This stuff is way better than normal and to be honest this is the first time I've used it and I've used it on that rubber grommet and it's, yeah, it's pretty strong so would recommend this stuff. So. so this is the grommet I was talking about but even if we go from there there's no way that this will fit under, it's not long enough so I mean I don't think I need it. I don't. I tend to make. None of my bikes have had them before because they're all been pretty old. So I don't think I need this neutral switch. Um, so I might just. It needs to see that it's in neutral. Can we just ground it off? Um, I should be able to bypass that, I think. I think I will bypass that. Um, Christ, get my hair. I don't think I need it. Otherwise it's unsightly, it looks shit, this little blue cable sticking out underneath your engine. Especially when everything's black. I don't think so. I don't think I'm being a retard. Um, <laughs> I might have a quick Google of this to make sure. I'm pretty sure my welding gloves have been stolen. <laughs> oh Christ, give it back. Leave. Lee. Good boy. Well, not really a good boy. You're an arsehole. Okay, so I've had a rethink with regards to this little cable that I don't know if you can see where it is meant to go underneath, but um, I believe this earths. Um, so if I can ground it off somewhere within the frame or it's within the engine itself, this has got a little, I think it's an M5, but I think if I can change this connector out for an M6, this bit stays still obviously, um, if I can just ground that out, I think that should work, or even on, I mean, I, it's not going to fit underneath, um, so I think that should work. Time will tell once I build the system up and make sure that I'm getting spark. If, the, if I can ground it off in here and I get spark, then I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, so that should take care of the earthing bit. Um, you can see here there's other other cables. Um, that needs to get earthed whenever I get my final earth put in. Um, and this is for my live. So I need to make a combination cable that that feeds me live from my battery and then into each one of these here also needs I've got some metal stuck in my hand that's why I got a plaster that's why we need uh, yeah additional lives all going to each of the coils so I'm waiting for connectors from um, RS components so once those arrive we can get working on those bits and pieces um, on the other side I'll show you so with this alternator I was missing cables uh, coming out the side panel um, which is actually on, for some reason there's, there's a bit missing here. Um, I do have the side panel but I don't think I've got the right cable sticking at the bottom that the regulator rectifier needs. Um, so I, in the garage next door there's my old XS750 which has got those bits so I will do a little switcheroo and, and go and get that and, and then we'll show you. So I now need to run my earth cables which is, and I'm still waiting on more bits from RS components coming but this is big 16mm um, squared um, area cable which is, so first one I'm using I am running from my battery down to my um, starter motor. Um, that's that's well, battery to regulator rectifier. No, <laughs> components are hard. Battery to starter relay, um, and then out of the starter relay, in down to my uh, starter motor. Then 
I need, so that's, that's going to be carrying live current. So I need to build another one of these, which has, which connects to like an earthing point on my engine. So conveniently, one of the dudes that follows me is a, a he, he rewires motorcycles. That's his, that's his thing. Um, and he's based up in Aberdeenshire as well. So really helpful. Um, come back, had a look over my wiring diagram. He's the one that told me uh, if you're taking a feed off your, your 12 volt battery, the current that your starter motor sees is quite high, so you need to be using a thick cable. You can't just use some thin, thin cable, which makes sense, but um, just good having someone reading that. So he's come back with a few pointers based on my wiring diagram and earthing points. So I'm going to select a few different earthing points. Um, one on the bike engine itself, uh, which is a fairly reliable earth apparently. And you, you, yes, you can use the frame, and I will be using the frame, but good to have a good earthing point on the bike it's on the bike engine itself so I'm going to run a cable similar thickness to this and that can be my return feed um, to, to the, the negative point on the battery um, so I'm going to do that other earthing points I'm going to put one in at the front of the bike um, for all my handlebar all my, if you see on my wiring diagram uh, all the ha handlebar inputs they need to ground so once they ground once you make the connection in that grounds, so that sends it to the the, the the B box, and then the B box takes that signal and sends it to wherever it needs to go on the bike. So uh, I need an earthing point in the front of the bike purely because I don't want me to be running loads of uh, black earth cables back towards my battery box. If I can use my, my 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 frame up the front, then that takes care of that. And then having a reliable earth all the way through the bike with the the cable we spoke about helps with that. Secondly, I'm going to have an earthing point within my battery box itself, which just kind of take as a point away from um, it's, it's going to be a point that's away from like the rest of the gubbings in the electrical box so um, I'm thinking I'll mount a little nut uh, onto a, a bit of 1.6mm uh, steel similar to what we did before um, and just weld that to the inside of the battery box out of the way and then we can have that as an earthing point so anything that comes from the back of the bike like my LEDs and everything else can come and earth off on that point there rather than all being everything being connected to the negative on the battery terminal so um, it's good fun this it's it's good learning about what needs to go where and, and instead of just saying so like the earthing point in my scrambler was uh, yes it's the frame it's a six volt system and everything else there's no electric starter on there um, but it was a peg trying to get everything connected up. So having various earthing points throughout the bike is going to make this thing a lot, a lot simpler. Um, and then the key is to try and hide it all and make sure that you're, you've got, you don't see all these earth. Well, you can see them, but you need a good consistent earth on a clean bit of metal. But for the for the good look of a bike, you don't want to have loads and loads of cables haphazardly placed around the bike, making it look like a, a shitty effort. So um, taking the time now to consider where these go should hopefully pay dividends when, once the bike's all done, so. I just tighten this in the vise because I've not got the right pliers, which may or may not be right, so don't blame me. So, I have robbed my other bike uh, of, when I removed the alternator cover on this one, I was appeared to be missing um, a fundamental piece of charging a motorbike system, and it felt quite light. So this is the one off the other bike, hopefully you can see it, but it's got all this stator windings and everything. and. So there's that, that bit that's on the side of the bike, uh, rotates around and generates. Magic happens and then electricity comes out. Um, but for whatever reason, my Panther doesn't have it, so I've got it here. This is quite manky. Um, I'm gonna try and clean it up, but be gentle when I clean it up because it's, uh, it's it needs just a gentle touch. <laughs> Nah, it's, uh, I don't want to just go and shove loads of aggressive cleaners on it because I may damage some of the, the, the stator windings. I've got like a, a protective coating on them. So. Um, I'm going to clean that up, take this out of its housing and put it into this one. Um, once that's done, I'll shove it back on the side of the bike 
É... My favourite shop delivered some stuff this week. Um, one of which is one of these fancy cone drill things for sheet metal, which I'll need a lot for drilling holes and everything. Benefit of this is trying finding a, a drill bit bigger than 12mm, 13mm for just a standard size, whereas this goes all the way up to 22. The fact that you pay. <laughs> Quite a lot for one of these, obviously it pays dividends, but um, I tried to eyeball what connections I would need and now have a bag of connections which are useless that need to go back. Hoorah! Um, drill bits, other bits and bobs, hacksaw blades, gloves. Gloves is a big one. I'm going to take this opportunity to go completely off tangent because it's not like me and say, I've tried to show you a picture of my manky thumb, but I had a bit of uh, metal ingrained in the thumb uh, this week and it went a bit minging and septic so I usually wear gloves but for some reason some of the metal work that I've done caused those ultra fine filings that's caused by these tungsten carbide bits so be careful if you use one of these uh, the, the filings are brutal they get everywhere and I've been pulling small chunks of metal even though I've not been doing metal work I've been pulling small chunks of metal out my fingers all week so you could do it next to a magnet, you could wear gloves, but even then I've found chunks of these little splinters on my clothes and if you like pull a t-shirt then you get a thing in your hand. So for the most part they come out, but this one it was ingrained pretty it was it was minging. So um finally some uh, M6 terminal connections. You up to man? Hey, you want to listen to Rise Against? Nobody listens to CDs anymore. This isn't 2010. God, get with the times. Sometimes my genius has no limits. Don't look at these failed <laughs> brackets. I'm trying to make something to allow my earth point to go inside my battery box and it's taking me far longer than I would like to admit. But because of its shape, I kind of want to have nice flat bits that I can then weld along but I was really struggling to get that in my bender which I've somewhat abandoned so um, I molded the profile around this here for the thin steel and then I have used my uh, just a chisel, cold chisel to get in here and here and then I will use the hammer to get that nice and flat, cut these off, and then I can nice weld a nice profile along each side of that within my battery box, which I'll show you in a second. Yay! Okay, so the past few hours have just disappeared with me fucking around with this battery box. Um, I was trying to put a, a nerf point in, which I've successfully done now, uh, but it was a few iterations. It's fine. I would like to see it neater than it is already, but I just, I, I've not got time to sit and do this. My, my skills when it comes to welding this thin steel need some work. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I've got an earth point inside my battery box now. I've got... <laughs> my battery fits in nicely alongside it. Slots in next to it so everything can get tied into that earthing point. I don't know why these jobs always take so long. Uh, this was the first time I've used my um, fancy new drill for sheet metal and, and, and I don't know why I haven't bought one of these sooner. This is a good a good little piece to have. Um, so the final, final thing I need to do for this um, battery box 
uh, a couple of things. I need to have bought some foam to kind of help secure the battery um, in place and I've had a few recommendations for other things to use as well, which I will, uh, in terms of securing it in with like 3M type Velcro and everything else. So, so that's fine. Um, the only other thing I need to do is try and get, figure out where holes are for, for routing cabling. So I, like I've said, I've got a few, man, this thing's taking a bit of a beating with some of the welding that I've done. So um, I'm assuming thin steel just takes practice. Uh, this is 1.6 mil. Seems quite easy to just blow holes through. So I wouldn't mind getting myself a few more projects of making stuff with this thin steel. I'm going off at a complete tangent, but for people working this and trying to fabricate things out there, they've never done it before. It, it is quite tough. The, um, the foot pedal helps a lot with the welder, but um, I'm just having a bit of an off day today. I think we're trying to get uh, nice consistent weld. So that's fine. I'll do some practice, go back to the drawing board. So, um, so <coughs> last thing I need to do is I've got my B box here. Um, I want to be sure that I can mount it in place, so I'm thinking I'll just get it, get the mounting holes, um, I'll take a video, get the mounting holes um, drilled, and then I can bolt this B-Box directly into this little box, um, so I'll do that now, that'll be the last thing I need to do in here, and then drill a couple of holes for my cables that are coming out of here, so we'll do that as well. What stress! This stuff here is from RS Components. Where else? My new favourite shop. But I was wondering whether I can use it to kill myself, because this bike's driving me insane. <laughs> I think I could use it in and around the battery box. I initially thought I could maybe help keep this upright by maybe cutting various sections in here and then just leaving it like that and then hoping that it will set itself on fire. This really pissed me off, doing this thing. Sorry, which you can probably tell. And I've also sliced my finger open as well off some shrapnel, which is quite nice. Why did I do this? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I could maybe... Areas like this, um, there's quite a bit of space in this bit here, which is dead space, so I think if I can start to pack this out with some foam, maybe, a combination of foam, it would keep the battery upright. I don't know, we'll see. Let's try something. I can't be arsed doing that right now. We'll, we'll move on to more exciting stuff that doesn't involve me pretending I'm in Blue Peter. Um, <laughs> and we'll go back over to the bike and try and get things bolted down and see what it starts to look like. So not a, I took a day off today to try and get loads done and as is the way you get sidetracked doing other shit which gets in the way of bike progress but I still think I've managed to progress. Um, this is a vlog after all, it's not a how to so you put up on my bullshit and detractions, thankfully there's not too many but the um, we're now in a good place, we've got a battery box uh, that's well set up to start wiring and whilst I thought I may have got onto the B-Box I want to try and keep that as a one of its own episodes so I can say how to wire a B-Box and I will go down in YouTube history as the most popular bike builder of all times because I've created a comprehensive video for wiring what is essentially a motor gadget unit which is already several hundreds of videos out there so 
<laughs> next video we're going to start running cabling we're going to get stuff done um so you can see the the, the 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 battery box we've got i feel quite happy with this we've got a really well thought out battery box now that earthing point pissed me off i still have some way to go with just getting confident with some thin steel uh, it turns out my welding torch the the cap was actually loose, slightly loose, which was causing some havoc. Uh, I turned down the amps slightly as well and gave it maximum throttle on the uh, foot pedal and that seemed to help me as well. Still, it's not as neat as I would like, but I can't spend all day doing these things. So everything else is neat and thought out and, and I'm quite chuffed with it. The starter switch looks good, the bungs look good, like the, the rubber, um, what do you call them? The grommets, that's the one, uh, they all look good, so I'm, I think I'm in quite a good place now to start the wiring. So we'll get on that next next time, we've got some switches, individual switches, we can, we can test everything else. But I would like to be in a place where if we want to test the starter motor we can, if we want to test the alternator we can, if we have uh, an LED we can test the function of that. Like I say, we're not going to have the full bike up and running, but if I've got all my wiring done and everything else laid out, I can start getting that exhaust finish that people keep asking me about, which I'm kind of avoiding. So, um, thanks for watching. Hope this was interesting. If there's anything you want me to cover in the next video whilst I'm doing the wiring, let me know because I've not started it yet. So, that would be quite cool. I, I'll put something on Instagram as well. So, if anyone else wants to know, but um, hopefully, it's beneficial to you guys. The wiring diagram is not on my site yet. I just want to have it all finished and make sure that I'm working properly, but it'll likely be on the site after the end of the, the, the motor gadget unit. So um, until then, take it easy. Please like and subscribe, share it all across the world. Let them know that there's some possibly functional alcoholic Scottish dude ruining another motorcycle way over budget and way over duration and join in and all the fun, but until then, take it easy folks, see you later.